are coming up in this hour. For the full next hour, I'm going to have open phones. I'm going to break down all the major facets of the health care bill. If you've got friends and family that want to know what's really in it, we'll go over it step by step and break down every facet of it. But it isn't just the takeover of health care. The government's taking over every facet of our lives and has select big corporate interests behind it who want to vertically integrate the economy. This is a monopoly being formed, as the founder of the Rockefeller clan said, competition is a sin. Before we go back to James Dillingpole, author, best-selling author of Welcome to Obama Land, I've seen your future and it doesn't work. He also writes for the Telegraph, the Daily Mail, the Mail on Sunday, the Sunday Times, the Times, and the Independent. And we're very honored to have him. We're going to get into the mindset of these people. When I get up here and tell you that I've been to smart growth conferences a decade ago, and I couldn't believe that they would laugh at me and say, of course we're robbing everybody off camera with all these big bankers and politicians and environmentalists. And, and that they hate everyone and they're thieving control freaks who want an excuse to rob you and they use guilt to control you. This study, along with a lot of other research that's been done, proves on average these are a bunch of criminals who get well-meaning people to then let them run their lives. So that's coming up. I want to remind listeners two new trailers are out for two new films. I never released two films in one month. It just so happened that several of these films got behind schedule, so they were both ready in the month of April. They're done. They're being mass-produced. We should get them in next week. You can pre-order uh, the new film by Jason Burmis, Invisible Empire, A New World Order Defined, How This Global Corporate bu Bureaucratic Banking System Works, Incredible Film, and Police State for the Rise of FEMA. I haven't made a Police State film uh, since, what, 2003, so seven and a half years and this covers the entire police state grid that Homeland Security is really set up for the American people. Uh, the actual FEMA camps and the government documents, uh, the U.N. forces, how they want to use military against the American people. Be the first to get it on DVD. You can pre-order now and get discounts on them at InfoWars.com. Okay, James, uh, I sidetracked you into the health care, but uh, you are a guinea pig who's been living through this. But it does integrate and dovetail into the overall mindset of these people. In fact, I have articles here where they say lowering our carbon footprint, destroying industry will save the earth and that, and that we do need to reduce population. And then we have this Canadian prestigious study done. Uh, and again, here are the headlines. How going green may make you mean. Ethical consumers less likely to be kind and more likely to steal, massively more likely to steal. So, so that's the guardian who are basically made up of a lot of these people, uh, admitting it. It's not just James Dillingpole uh, writing about it, but James has been saying these very things for four or five years that I've been reading his columns since I've been aware of him. James, how did you know this about them? I guess you had the same experience as I did, but let's find out. And then, B, let's get into this study in detail. Well, I think, I think Alex, it, it all fits into the bigger picture. I, I, I think this rule doesn't just apply to um, Greens. It applies to libtards, uh, Marxists, uh, do-gooders generally. People of, people of the liberal left generally feel that because they vote for a form of government which involves wealth distribution, which involves uh, government punishing the rich and making rules, they feel that that is their moral get-out-of-jail-free. I think, you know, conservatives are much more honest about the facts of life. They're much more... They, they believe much more in personal responsibility. And I think for that, because conservatives believe in personal responsibility, they hold themselves to higher standards of behavior than liberals. Do, does that gel with your experience? Absolutely, and I don't even call them liberals. They're a, it's a control freak cult who hates everyone and loves to run people's lives. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's, you know, I think that, that uh, liberals have a, or, or call, call them what you will, um, watermelons, uh, <laughs> Marxists, whatever. They have a, a very depressing view of human nature, which is that we are all so essentially evil that the only way that we can be coerced into good behavior is for big government to step in and rule our lives. And I think they include themselves. You know, subconsciously, they think that they, they think of themselves as, as these flawed, corrupted people. So they, they don't feel the need to behave well in the sense 
same way that you or I might do. You know, I mean, I feel that ultimately I'm going to be judged for my behavior. Um, I expect people to behave well towards me as I behave well towards them. Your, your libertad doesn't care about that because, hey, that's what that's government's job. It's government's job to police behavior. And if you can get away with it, as in this, you know, this, this rather interesting research from Canada, where this experiment was done on all these, uh, uh, these students, and they divided them into various control groups, and they discovered that, uh, where are we, let's, let's, let's see, it says, uh, later in an honor system in which participants were asked to take money from an envelope to pay themselves their spoils, the Greens were six times more likely to steal than the conventionals. <laughs> now, this is, a, this is a psychological experiment, but I think, I think we, all, we all know where it's coming from. It, it just, it's borne out by our daily lives, is it not? Well, it is, but expanding on that, I think it's even worse. Talking to these people, they see themselves as powerless scum who never have any future, who are very envious and hateful, whereas a more libertarian or classical conservative has a high view of themselves and enjoys life and likes seeing others do well. I mean, that's how I am. I never thought of myself as some special good guy. This was just who I was and my parents and my yeah, culture. We spend our whole time being eaten up with envy about other people doing well because we think, well, that's how the system works. Some people do, do better than others, and, and normally it's through... Exactly. It's an envy. It's an envy-based thing. So they feel that they get power through the state. They feel like that it's their state, their government. It, 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 it's an extension of them. They're, they're living vicariously through Stalin or through Obama or through Mao. That's, that's totally true. I, and I would say the very worst, the lowest of all vermin, I'm afraid to say, are the watermelons, the, the, the Marxists who've essentially moved into the green movement and co-opted it for their own ends. Because I see, you know, I, I spend a lot of time arguing with these people. And what strikes me about, about the majority of dark green, you know, eco-fascists that I have met uh, is that they really do not care about nature and they loathe mankind. You know, they are not in it to save the world. They are in it to punish the, the human species for their outrageous um, cheek in existing on the planet. They think we are a blot on the landscape. They want population uh, controls. They want to carpet the countryside with, with wind farms. They want the government to regulate. And they are quite happy for the global economy to be bombed back to the dark ages in the name of saving the planet. But they don't want to save the planet. They want to destroy the world, in fact. Well, uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's not just Maury Strong. It's, it's Pachari. It's the UN. It's the Biological Diversity Assessment 96. It's Let's not forget the WWF, who, who are very much part of this. Thing. Yeah, let's talk about the Nazi founder of that, Prince Bernhard, who then got caught using World Wildlife Fund cover in, 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 in ivory sales. I mean, again, most of them don't consciously know this is a fraud. They consciously know that it's a eugenics movement. Morris Strong was it was it was uh, I, I think he's, he's closely associated with the World Wildlife Fund. And you, you, you think about it. When I was growing up in the 1970s, I was very familiar with that cute little panda. You know the, the panda motif. You know, I, I think every child in the world is brought up to think of the World Wildlife Fund as as this caring, sharing organisation which has nothing more than the world's best interests at heart. This is an organisation who, whose income. Is currently what? It's about, I'd say, about 300, uh, no, more than that. It must be about 400,000, uh, 400 million pounds a year. So what's that? That's about 550 million dollars a year. More than that. It's about, it's about 650. Okay, six, so the World Wildlife Fund makes 600 million dollars a year. That's its income. And there was a story that when you caught in the, in the British press, uh, the week. There's nothing cuddly about the WWF. No. They have brought up swathes of the Amazonian rainforest, and they reckon that uh, if, if uh, the carbon trading gets enforced by governments, if carbon regulation gets railroaded through by the likes of Obama, then the World Wildlife Fund stands to make $60 billion. $60 billion. Now, how scary is that? This, this unelected organization... Uh, over whom voters have no control whatsoever, with, an, with a Marxist agenda in control of that kind of... Well, 